Hey everybody, sorry I didn't start the video yet. Um, we had a question going over problem number 10 from the review. So here it is. All right, so um, all I'm doing is just trying to reduce down this uh, expression so that it's easily easy to find the derivative, the antiderivative. All right, so let's keep going. This is from one to five. And now this turns into um, one over x or x to the negative one plus two x squared. Everybody follow me so far? And now I find uh, I find that the antiderivative. Now to do that, I need to think about what does x to the negative one turn into? Ln of x, natural log of x. That's the weird one. That's the only um, that's the only one that looks like a polynomial that turns into something weird. It turns into ln of x. So this is ln of x, and I would say absolute value of x, but does it matter? No, because both of these endpoints are positive, so I don't need to worry about any sort of negatives going on. So I'm just going to write it as just ln of x uh, plus 2x to the third over 3 from 5 to 1. Everybody follow me so far? I kick up the power 1, goes from squared to the third, and then divide by that power to 3. All right, so now to evaluate that, that just turns into um, top minus bottom, ln of 5 plus 2 times 5 to the third over 3 minus, and I like to, again, put that in parentheses. I guess I should put it in parentheses. ln of 1 plus 2 times 1 to the third over 3. Top minus bottom. Finding the difference in between the two. All right, so let's go to our calculators. And we write, uh, we plug in ln of 5 plus, okay, that would be 5 to the third is 125. I'm we'll trying to do this in my head, so I don't have to use too many parentheses. Uh, 5 to the third is 125 times 2 is 250. So 250 divided by 3. 84.94. Minus ln of one, which should be should be zero, right? Yeah. Um, ln of one plus, and then it's two times one to the third, but one to the third is just one. So it's really just two over three. So minus two thirds. All right. Let's see what that is. Uh, Eighty-four point nine four. Minus two thirds. Um, Eighty-four point two seven. Yep, I wrote two eight, but you would get I think I just plugged it in all at once because I needed the two eight. Yeah. So you plugged it in all at once. Do we have to do like eight? No, I just wanted to show the work so you see where it's coming from. Yeah, if you want, if you're good at plugging it in in your calculator, go for it. I always get, I always get tripped up. Like I always forget a parenthesis or something stupid, and I just. I don't know. So I like to do it separately. And I also, there's a lot of times where I will forget to do this parenthesis. Like when I'm doing them, I, I, I forget to do that big parenthesis and then it ends up just adding that piece rather than, I really want to subtract that piece in the very end, the two times one to the third over three. Good there? Go ahead. 11. Let's take a look at 11. Turn it up to 11. You guys know what I'm referencing there? I feel like I've told this story. Have I talked about this is final path? Oh my gosh, put it on your movie list. It's a movie called This Is Spinal Tap. Okay? Yes, This Is Spinal Tap. It's a mockumentary. Okay? So it's like a fake documentary about an 80s band. This Is Spinal Tap. It's, it's, it's hilarious. It's so funny. Like they ask this, this band, they're like, We noticed that your amps go to 11. Like, why, why did you choose to go to 11? And he was like, well, it makes more sound. 
And they were like, well, isn't it just like the highest that will go? Like, is it turning it up to 10, turning it up to 11? He goes, <laughs> but, and they're, they're, they're British. And you're like, but it goes to 11. They're like, but isn't that the thing? He's like, yeah, but it, it goes to 11. Not 10, it goes extra, it goes to 11. Is that like the one movie about the penguins where they have the mockumentary, like there's the crew and they climb the guy, they're surfers. Yeah. I don't know. Isn't that, that one. a mockumentary? If we have an exit, you should bring it. Yeah, we just watch it. This, this no, is fun. So maybe, maybe if we got time at the end of class day, I can show that okay. clip. It's really hilarious. Yeah. Okay. It's the same people. You ever watch? You ever see the movie Dog Show? No. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it's hilarious. These are hilarious movies. <laughs> Dog show. That's another one. Dog show. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, let's get back to that. <laughs> uh, sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and calculate its area. All right. So uh, let me draw it out and see what's happening here. So I have the square root of x, and this is the the um, <coughs> y equals zero. That's the x-axis, and then I've got x equals seven. So one, two, three. So it's going uh, here, you know, four would be, let's do this, one, two, three, because that'll get me all the way up to nine. Um, if I square root one, I get one. If I square root zero, I get zero, obviously. If I square root four, I get two. If I square root nine, I get three. But I want to stop here, right? So that means that I want this area. Yeah. Correct. I'm looking for the area enclosed by that shape. Yeah. Because I'm going from um yeah. you know since it's equal to zero I could I use the point zero zero. All right, so really, what is this diagram showing me? What is this diagram actually asking me to find? It's actually asking me to find the integral going from x equals 0 to x equals 7. Why do I know x equals 0? Well, because if I plug in 0, what, what, if, I, if I make that 0, what's the x value? 0. That's why I know it's going from 0 to 7, seven. of the function. And now we just use um, that FTC2, the, the, the top minus bottom. So this is really uh, from 0 to 7 of x to the 1 half dx. So I take the antiderivative. Uh, no, sorry, that's gone now. I take, pick up the power 1. I always make this 1.5. The book always makes it 3 over 2. I'm lazy. I write it as a 1.5 over 1.5. From 7 to 0, which is 7 to the 1.5 over 1.5 minus 0. Because 0 to the 1.5 is 0 divided by 1.5 is again 0. So let's figure out what this is. This is 7 to the 1.5. Which is 18.52 divided by 1.5, which will get me 12.35. Yep, 12.35. Questions on that one? So good about that one? Yep. Is that the same type type of one? Yeah, but it doesn't have it. Oh yeah, oh this is a cool one. Yeah. Uh, we don't need no stinking graphing calculators. We don't need no graphing calculators. All right, let's. Um... That's weird. Okay. That's All right, sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and calculate its area. All right, so what is the y greater than zero or y equals zero telling me? That's the that's the, the x-axis, right? 
So I'm going to enclose this with this 25 minus x squared, right? What's the ver What's the high point of this? 25, right? Because if I'm thinking about this, that's y is equal to negative x squared plus 25. That's a vertical shift 25 units up. And then what is the negative doing on the outside of the x squared? Flipping it downward, right? Making it a frowny face, right? Not happy, Dave, are you sad? So it's a, it's a frowny face, it's going down. Okay, well, so we know it's shaped downward, so we're gonna have this area enclosed here. But where is it actually gonna happen? Where are the x values that I wanna find the integral of? Plus or minus five, it's the zeros, right? It's the zeros. So x squared is equal to 25 plus or minus 5. So I know that this is going to intersect here and there and have a high point at 25, not drawn to scale. And that's what I find what I want to find the area. I know this does exist down here, right? This is just going to keep keep going down there, right? But I just want to find the area. That diagram represents this. Going from negative 5 to positive 5 of that function. We draw the diagram so we can interpret the diagram into an integral. And then we can use top minus bottom rule to evaluate it. So uh, this is already set up as a polynomial, so let's go for it. 25x minus x to the third over 3, top minus bottom. Does that make sense? We give the 25 the x. I raise the power, I divide by that power, and now I plug in 5 and then negative 5 and I find the difference. 25 times 5 minus 5 to the third over 3 minus the big expression 25 times negative 5 minus negative 5 to the third over 3. So let's find left side. Uh, 25 times 5. Uh, minus 5 to the third is a bit. 25 divided by 3. So it's 83 and a third. And then we've got, okay, 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. Minus, and then we've got negative 125 divided by 3. Oh, that's right. Negative 83.3. I was like, this can't be zero. But it's not zero. It's double, right? Because isn't this, and that makes sense, because isn't this area equivalent to this area? Right? So I should have two of the same thing. So we say that this is 83. And a third plus 83 and a third, 166.6. Yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? No. Okay, and I'm back. All right, other
other questions? On the review? Yeah. Yeah. Come back to me. Oh, the Riemann sound. Yeah. 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 Why is it sound like that? Okay. Using the midpoints, right? Yeah. Using the midpoints. Okay. All right. Now the um the Riemann sum is basically the area, the sum of the rectangles, right? The area of the the sum of the area of the rectangles. I'm saying it wrong. The sum of the area of the rectangles where n equals five. That's a key piece to pick out there where n equals 5. So let's figure out what our delta x is. Delta x is equal to, now, uh, remember, Riemann sum is um, from x equals i to n. What is the correct notation? Oh, some, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. From i equals 1 to n of delta x f of x i. Right, that's the Riemann sum. Okay, what does that mean? That means I need to find my delta x. And delta x is always um, b minus a over n. So 5 minus 0 over 5. I'm getting this from 5 minus 0 over 5. So delta x is 1. The change in x is always is 1 here. Okay, so that means what is, uh, what is x 1? Well, if I'm using midpoints, my first interval is 0 to 1, right? So my x value I want to use is 0.5. And then I want to use 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5. That's all I'm going to use, right? Why do I start with the 0.5? Because my sample points are midpoints. Okay, if I wanted to use left, left points, I would start with zero. Do zero, one, two, three, four. If I wanted to use right end points, I would do one, two, three, four, five. But I'm using midpoints. So I've got to start with the middle of my first interval. The interval of one, I know I have to start with 0.5 and then continue up from there using intervals of one. So 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. And now to find the Riemann sum, I take delta x, which is 1, times all of the sum of the fxi's. So f of 0.5 plus f of 1.5 plus f of 2.5 plus f of 3.5 plus f of 4.5. The one sitting on the outside is my delta x. Doesn't do anything here, but that's my delta x. So now we just got to plug this in. Right? So I'm going to take 0.5. Did I actually work it all out? I did. Well, okay. 0.5 squared. My, oh, what the heck? 0.5 squared minus 3. And then, oh yeah, I'm going to do this all at once. Uh, 1.5 squared minus 3 plus 2.5 squared minus 3 plus 3.5 squared minus 3 plus 4.5 squared minus 3. Whoa. What's wrong? It is. Oh, gotcha. Okay, thank you. I was going to say, like, I didn't think I, I did. Uh, 4.5 squared minus 3. There we go. That's what we're 26.25. Yep, that's what I got. So the Riemann sum is 26.25. That's the area underneath the curve. Using midpoints. 
Do we know of a way to do that a little bit more accurately now? Yeah, we could just find the antiderivative. And find the antiderivative and use top minus bottom, top minus zero. Will it give me a more exact answer? Yeah, it will. But this is good for, for the Riemann stuff. Yeah? Can you tell me what the sure. Okay, just take a look at what I needed to do. Um, remember, the fundamental theorem of calculus one said that um, I. I want to look at something real quick. Yeah, okay. The FTC one said that um, the integral and the derivative will cancel each other out, right? That's what FTC one really said. The derivatives and integrals really are inverses of one another. So if I take the derivative of an integral, it will cancel itself out. Just like if I. If I take the square root of a square, it will cancel itself out. If I take um, multiplication and division, it will cancel itself out. So if I want to find the derivative of this, right, then that will cancel that out. It will turn into, right, and what do I have to do with this? This goes in to there. So this turns into 6 over, blue line go over. Turns into six over five plus three x squared minus two. You see this this piece. I'll put it in parentheses for us here. This piece goes in there, and what cancels out? The integral and the dx cancels out. Okay, that's that's how I, that's the inverse cancels that out. Just like the square cancels out the square root. Now, I have to use the chain rule, because that's a function in itself, I have to use the chain rule on top of that. So I have to I have to find the derivative of this as well. Finding the derivative of this outside piece gets us just the 6 over the 5 plus that plugged in. Then I also have to find the derivative of this piece as well, peeling back the layers, remember. So what is the derivative there? 6x? Yeah, 6x. Take it down front, multiply, lower the power. So this turns into a 36x over um, 3x squared plus 3. And look at that, I can divide by 3. So a 12x over x squared plus 1. And that's my answer. Remember, the FTC one says that the derivative of, the, of an integral will cancel itself out. They are inverses of one another. What else do we need? No, that's a five plus. Yeah, five plus, uh, five times. Because it was a 5 plus x here. You get. What other questions do we have? Um, I know there was a lot of people that uh, didn't do them. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scan this in. I'm going to put it online right now. Um, I'll give you the rest of the time to study on your own. If you'd like to talk, if you'd like to come up and ask some questions, you can do that. Um, other than that, I'll just kind of let you guys be. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Let me scan in the answer key. As I walk around, I see a lot of people that uh, got a lot of blank papers, which is, you know, you do you. Like those plastic Adirondack ones. Those 
Yeah, we they, 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 they break all the time. No, I should, but then they just flush. They break them. They break them. Mm -hmm. They share. As soon as y equals zero, it stops. Okay. Right. So I could have said like y equals negative zero, and then we can then you have to find the intersection. Okay. And that's where you know you're not All right. That makes Oh, wasn't he assigned to do last night? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have more to come out with. <laughs> well, how? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten? Half the class? Woo! Proud of you guys. Come on. I'm going to be honest. There's a good chance that won't be fun. Yeah. Um, is there any? Oh, yeah. 